Happy Trans Day of Visibility. As a trans woman, I can tell you I'm very, very grateful for this day and very happy to celebrate. I'm 50 in November, born in 1970. So when I was growing up, there I grew up in a um, religious household with, at first, no TV and things like that, but then even when there was TV and whatnot, we didn't know, when I say we, I mean my family, we didn't know anything about trans issues or, or what even that was, if that was. All they knew is that I was effeminate and more than likely gay. And <clears throat> all of my life, I mean all of my life, I was mercifully beat down, mercifully jumped after school, trying to run over me at football games. I grew up in a very white, very conservative town called Texas City. And you couldn't be different. You couldn't be the oddball out. You couldn't be anything but, you know, football is my life, it's Texas. So, I came out, it was awful, it was awful, awful. Now mind you, this is coming out as gay because I was always told my whole life that I was gay because I was clearly a girl. From the moment that anybody laid eyes upon me, you could clearly see that I was a girl. And it was just, oh my God, it was awful. For years, it was just awful, 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 awful. Such turmoil in my family, such uh, lack of support and motivation from certain members of my family. And just, um, you know, I, I'm mirroring what so hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of us have the same story, especially my age and older. But I will tell you that love love prevailed and although they didn't understand they did their best to love me because it wasn't their choice for me the older i got the more i realized that i was still not happy where's that fart hair i was still not happy i had for so long done so many awful things to my body it was it's been a running theme through my whole life until like seven years ago when I gave up alcohol and cocaine. So anyway, I finally had to listen. I finally had to listen. So I moved back to, to Texas from Las Vegas after there for like four or five years, like four years. And shortly thereafter, I began my transition. And I don't really remember coming out as trans with my family. I don't really remember that. I do remember that, I do remember certain conversations about it. Um, and I think that was the harder blow for my parents and family than if I were a gay man. Because if I were a gay man, then they would still physically have their son, uh, aesthetically have their son, not physically, aesthetically have their son. And I totally get that. I totally get what it is to grieve because I had to grieve him when I let him go. I had to grieve him. So we all grieved together, but in our separate ways. But I have to say that as much as I have gone through emotionally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, all, all the leads, the one constant was my mom, my mommy. She may not have liked it or agreed with it or absolutely flat out refused to hear it. But even through any of that, if it may or may not have happened, there was always love. And there's something about a quiet, calm love that is reassuring. 
especially when that reassurance comes from verbal communication. I don't understand. It's not what I choose for you. It's hard for me to lose my son, but I love you and I want you to be happy. Those words mean the difference between death and choosing life as a trans person. When we come out and we express, I can't do this anymore. I cannot live this lie because it's killing me. To have that rationality from someone to, to say, I don't like it, but I'm not you and I still love you. That, that kept me alive. I am so happy and proud of all of our families that have gone so far and leaps and bounds in this generation to love and appreciate your children and see who they are early and listen to them. Even when they can't speak, you can still hear them. And I think it's marvelous. And I think you were to be commended. I also want to say my babies who are having a really rough time, like I did, oftentimes there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Oftentimes we just have to bunker down and breathe through the hate and through the dismissal and through the ignorance and selfish behavior of those around us. I want you to hear me when I tell you that I have thought about suicide when I was young because I was so alone. I never could do it because I know that love is the number one factor in the universe. It is because it always prevails. And I want you to know that loving yourselves is the key and the step to survival. If you need anybody, I'm here. If you wanna talk and I'll listen. If you wanna write, I'll read. I'm here for anybody who wants to reach out and needs support or just someone to tell you that you're loved. It would make me very happy. It does make me very happy. I, like many of the girls my age, have so much history, so much history. Please utilize our history. Ask us. Include us in your journey. I know that I can speak for a handful of girls that I can say off the top of my head that would absolutely adore it because we it makes us feel good about ourselves and we help you. I love you and I hope that you have safety at least within your own skin. God bless and keep you and happy Trans Day of Visibility. Today deserves a great you.